What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me right here at my YouTube channel. This is where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we'd love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, and TV shows. And right now I'm gonna do a bit of a retrospective. I'm gonna look back on an older movie and just kind of talk about it. <coughs> and right now, because the trailer for the sequel just came out, we're gonna talk about Turner and Hooch. So we know Disney Plus is doing a Turner and Hooch series that I thought was going to be a reboot. It turns out that the Turner and Hooch series is actually going to be a sequel series to that original movie. So I went back and I watched on Disney Plus the original Turner and Hooch just to kind of revisit, kind of refresh my memory on it before the series premieres next month. And, you know, it's one of those movies that Hollywood just doesn't really make anymore. Speaking of dogs, right? You good boy? Kobe, good boy? Come here. There we are. I let him climb on my couch. I know. I know. <laughs> but Hollywood just doesn't really make movies like Turner and Hooch anymore. It's, it, you know, what we look for now in our movies is these big budget spectacle actioneers, right? Big special effect laden films. And. Turner and Hooch came out at a time when it was okay to have an action movie that didn't have explosions everywhere and cars jumping off of mountains and cars shooting off into space. And, you know, it, it came out at a time when it was okay for normal people like Tom Hanks to have action sequences. And they were even kind of believable just because he was such a good actor put into such a um, realistic situation. You know, nobody is ninjas here. Nobody has superpowers. You know, everybody's, even the bad guys, they're all just normal people. And because of that, it lends a certain amount of realism to it. And I'm not talking about like gritty, you know, realism where everything is like ultra violent or hyper violent or anything like that. I'm just talking about like real, real scenarios. <clears throat> Remember, Turner and Hooch is about a dog that sees a murder. And... Turner takes the dog in and he tries to solve the murder case. And while he's trying to solve the murder case, he uncovers that there's some crooked cops in, in, in the town. And while it's fictional, you can also watch this and be like, all right, this is definitely kind of real world based. You know, the dog's not, the dog doesn't have superpowers. The dog isn't jumping through a brick wall even though it does jump through some stuff in this movie it's all it's not you know brick wall type stuff the dog doesn't get shot 15 times and and, and keep coming you know this is a, a movie where a dog gets shot and it perishes this movie has that realism to it that a lot of movies don't have today because everything has to be real bombastic Turner, Turner and Hooch also had <coughs> a certain amount of, it had this sweet comedy element to it, right? It's, it's a sensibility that really Tom Hanks was able to bring at the time. Even though this was a murder mystery movie that had action components in it, and it had the dog actually doing some action sequences, he Tom Hanks was able to bring to it this certain light-hearted comedy routine where it wasn't Jim Carrey, you know, over-the-top type comedy. Um, it wasn't Adam Sandler's stupid type comedy. It was authentic, you know. It, it felt like when he was reacting to things and, and what he was saying and what he was doing and what he was reacting to was funny, it felt genuine and it felt real. Um, today, if a movie were to get made like this, I think it would probably, well, I think it would go straight to streaming. And look, the sequel series is going straight to streaming. I just feel like this is the type of movie that Hollywood is not interested in these days. And I, I wish that they would be, because this is a low-budget film that released on the big screen would still not just turn a profit, not just break even, but it would turn a profit. And I would like to see these types of movies made by Hollywood more. These low-risk type films 
that I was watching the Brewers game <laughs> and I was hoping the Brewers would lose and they just won. I'm a Cubs fan, so I was hoping for the Brewers to lose and they just won. Oh, well. But yeah, they don't really make these low risk movies anymore. Everything has to be high risk. $200 million budgets are higher. Unless you're Bloomhouse. <laughs> Bloomhouse, Jason Bloom knows. We're going to spend $10 million on this movie. And if it makes $60 million, then we're rolling in the riches. He knows. And that's the type of movie that Turner and Hooch was. You know, let's spend a little bit of money on it. And if it, you know, if it triples our budget, then we're doing great. But the problem is that everybody feels like the movies today have to be, you know, $200 million budgets and we can only turn a profit if it makes $800 million. Why? Why? Because because of that, we don't get movies like Turner and Hooch anymore that are just ridiculously entertaining movies. Um, so, and we still get dog movies. We do. I remember my, my son, he liked The Dog's Purpose, Dog's Journey, Dog's Way Home. My son actually liked all three of those, but those are very different types of movies. Right? Those are kind of like the what I would kind of refer to as like the pet tearjerkers. They're designed to elicit tears from the audience or they're designed to make us feel sadness or empathy or um nostalgic feelings for our pets from years ago this is a movie about a man and his dog but it's more along the lines of a police it's more along the lines of a police buddy cop movie canine with um um jim belushi was the same way. Canine. I think that was with Jim Belushi, right? Let me check. Yeah, Jim Belushi. Yeah, guys, I remember Canine. Oh, my dad took me to see that when I was little. How old was I? I must have been, yeah, I must have been eight years old when Canine came out. My dad took me to see it. I loved it. I loved it. And those, like I said, that's the type of movie they don't make anymore. A buddy cop movie with a man and his dog. Um... Because everything has to be huge. And movies like this specifically have to be huge. And uh, yeah, it's too bad. I would like to see more turn and hooches out there that go to the big screen rather than straight to Disney+. Plus. So, I don't know. I loved it. I think Turner and Hooch is one of the, uh, um, you know, one of the great movies of its time. <clears throat> Let me remind myself what year it came out. Yep, came out in, came out in 89. It came out the same year as K-9. Um, yes, I was eight years old and Turner and Hooch came out. You know, it just, something nostalgic about that movie just, it just feeds my soul watching it because it brings me back to when I was a little kid. <sighs> That's one of the beautiful things about movies though, right? They can do that to us. All right, guys, Turner and Hooch. Do you have fond memories of it like I do? Or maybe you're somebody who you didn't catch it until later on in life and you're like, eh, what's the big deal? I'm glad they don't make movies like this anymore. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. While you're down there commenting, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out a lot of content. want to make sure that you're up to date with everything that I'm doing. And as always, thank you so much for joining me right here at the OQ Review where we get to talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. Until next time, we'll see you later.